Let's get this fuel cap prototyped. Um, this is a basic FDM printer I have in house. It's great for creating functional prototypes quickly. And it's also not the most exciting thing in the world to watch, so let's uh, time lapse on through. Four hours later, the part came out really well. Let's remove the support material. Uh, it's necessary in 3D printing for overhanging surfaces because um, in FDM printing, it's done layer by layer and there needs to be something to support the upper layers. I use a great slicer program and this material comes off really easily. So here's the part, it needs a little bit of cleanup, but overall it came out really well. It should work great uh, to test fit before machining the final part. Hey everyone, we're going to go over doing a, a rendering on this 930 fuel cap. I'm using Keyshot. There's a lot of great rendering programs like Maxwell, V-Ray, Octane. It doesn't really matter what you use, you can get the same results and the techniques um, transfer over. So we're going to go over some lighting, uh, material creation and editing and setting up our, our shot. So let's dive right into it. I just imported our CAD model directly from Fusion in the key shot and the first thing I'm going to do is get it positioned within our scene so we can, uh, we can start setting up our cameras. I always turn on the ground grid and we'll look at it dead on with an orthographic camera so we can make it sit on the ground realistically. I want to tilt it a little bit so we get more of an organic and realistic feel on this image. You know, if it's sitting on a table, I think it'd be sitting right on those, between those two ridges right there. So something like this looks good. We'll go back to our regular camera and we're going to start framing our shot. With this, it's just utilizing regular photography guidelines and rules. You don't really want two tangent curves running into each other and we want to show off uh, the details and important parts of this component. So I think a shot like this looks pretty cool, kind of utilizing our rules of halves and thirds to have this face open up to a big area. All right. We'll lock this in with a new camera and leave that for now. So next we're going to apply some materials. Um, in Fusion 360, John turned the model to anodized red, so let's go with that. Now this is just a stock material we can start with. I think it looks far too perfect and uh, in, in the real world something wouldn't look quite this good. So I'm going to add in some textures and map the material here. I think a bit of a brushed look would look good. And there's a lot of just making adjustments and getting everything to look right. Maybe something like this. At a bit of an angle. Something like, like this could look pretty cool. I know the bump map is, is still uh, too prominent. Let's knock that down a little bit. So this looks good. I'm going to add a little more roughness so it's not like a perfect anodization. We'll reflect a little bit less light. I think this is a good starting point. Next we want to add a ground plane and we'll put a material in, in there to add some realism to this scene and really start to bring it together. 
Uh, now I like to do contrasting materials, so the parts metal, maybe a wood or a stone ground plane. Let's go and dive into some, again we'll just go with some stock materials here. A procedural wood to start. That's too bright. You know, I don't really like, on second thought, I don't like the, the red and the brown together. So let's go with marble material. And we'll make that scale a little more realistic. Maybe something like this. And now that I have my ground in there, actually, I want to move the camera a little bit. Move our part up. Something like this could be pretty cool. Add another camera and save that. So next I'm going to go over lighting. There's a few ways to do this. There's a lot of HDRIs on the internet, HDR images that you can just drag in and get that kind of that lighting reflecting off your product. Um, just so we focus on the on the lighting on the actual product, I'm going to turn our background to a color, and now we can start sort of see start to see stuff come together and appear realistic. Generally, marble isn't this reflective. I'm going to add some roughness to that and get rid of some clarity on that reflection. Uh, I'll show you a couple more environments just so you can see how they reflect off our part. And then we'll dive into editing our own HDRI, which is what I usually do. We'll go ahead and start with a studio, just a plain gradient. And I will start to add my own lighting. So this is Keyshot's built-in HDRI out of there. You just add pin lights. I'm going to add a bit of a sky to start so we get some general light over our scene. Change the fall-off mode to linear. I think it adds a little more realism. And we'll keep it that soft white. The lighting, uh, I usually spend quite a few hours on fine-tuning and, and getting everything to look great. We're going to power through it right now. We'll set this pin to, yeah, I, I like where it is, kind of reflecting off the surface. We get this nice line here. So, what if we cut that in half? I like this. It adds a bit of depth and, uh, yeah, it just adds depth to the, to the scene. One technique I use a lot is I'll have different hues of lighting. Oh, our camera's not locked in. Get that camera back to where we had it. Lock that in. So our light coming in from here, I might want it to seem like a man-made um, soft light. So what I do is I'll actually change the color of that on the Kelvin scale. So we'll add some warmth to that light and get a bit of an orangey reflection off the side. Oh, gotta save it. Just something like this. And then I'll do the same thing. Um, maybe with the light coming in from the other side. More the shape of a window and I'll make that have the color of a, of a sky, add a cooler hue to that. So that it would seem like it's some light coming in from a window. Something like this looks good. We want, we really want to highlight maybe, maybe around the edge here, around a rim. So yeah, now we see that cooler hue coming in here. I generally uh, play with lighting quite a bit and we can get some really cool reflections. So the last thing I want to go over is adding some realism to the camera. 
for, for a single product like this, um, a single part, depth of field is a really good way to do that. Um, and again, it's just playing around, probably do an f-stop of eight, just to blur out that background and really bring our focus to the, to the part and make it look like it was shot from an actual camera. And I think if we let this render out, we'd be pretty happy with it. Um, I might have taken a little too much reflection out of the marble because I do want to have some of that red reflecting off it. So something like this. It's really just a lot of fine tuning and checking your work and look and comparing it to, to real photographs to see how different materials react. But this is a good start. I, uh, I actually spent quite a bit of time coming up with what I thought was a great shot to represent this component. I'm going to bring that up and show it to you now and show you some of the detail I went into. All right, so this is, this is the shot I came up with after doing everything I just showed you but spending a lot more time at it. Um, you can see the material graph for the ground here. We did some really cool stuff, lots of different bump maps and material maps to add texture and reflectivity. Um, the part, I did a bit of a spun look on here, um, kind of to mimic machining marks. Obviously this part would be finished pretty well. I'm not sure how much time John is going to spend sanding and, and removing all the tooling and machining marks. But, so you can see some of that below the anodization here. And again, we'll look at our lighting. Um, you can see I, I did a warm hue coming in here, and this, this material, after we tuned it, it reflects really well. Uh, after this, I, I do a bit of post-processing in Photoshop. So this is our final image. Um, it doesn't look too good on YouTube, so if you head over to my Facebook page, just Birch and Design House, you can see the full high-resolution image. I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's a good representation of this part. It could be used in, uh, in marketing it or as an ad campaign, a number of things. So I hope you found this helpful, and thank you very much for watching.